Welcome to my opinion here on My Opinion TV. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, click the notification bell. So as soon as a video is released, you'll be one of the first to be notified. And upon the hearing of my voice this morning, we have much to give God thanks for. So many people went to bed last night with the dreams and aspiration of getting up this morning and are not numbered among the living. But as long as we are alive, we have much to give God thanks for. No matter what the situation, no matter what your condition might be, the fact that life is in your body is worth giving praise. Now this morning, before we get into our story, I just want to tell you that I have now formed a WhatsApp group you can join. And the WhatsApp number is 876-892-2079. That's the number on screen. 876-892-2079. And on that number, I do not accept calls. Or some people have this habit of trying to call you and I'm video called, but you can send me a message on that platform. Now this morning, we turn our attention to St. Catherine. And it seems as if St. Catherine is the parish that hate women, women the most. Because so far, in St. Catherine alone, since the start of the year, we have lost... Chevonine Shev Golding, Murderline Sullivan, Nicola Sital, plus this woman that was murdered yesterday, Patsy Coleman, in St. Catherine. And according to the Jamaica Gleaner, the Hold Harbor Police in St. Catherine are searching for a man who fatally shot a fish vendor at the Hold Harbor Bay Fish Market on Tuesday afternoon. 51-year-old Patsy Coleman of Rasta Corner, Sandy Bay, Clarendon, is the fourth female to be killed in St. Catherine for the month of February alone. That is a concern and that is a very disheartening information. Coleman, who sells fish on the street, went to buy her stock on the beach at about 1.15 p.m when she was shot and killed after using the toilet on the compound. If anybody have any idea of Old Arbor Fishing Village, is that a lot of persons come there to purchase fish. We also know what takes place at any beachside that fish is sold where these fishermen, some of them go out sea to catch fish and I'm talking about the fish that you can eat while some of them go out there to catch iron fish that is destroying Jamaica well an eyewitness said that Coleman returned from the bathroom she was pounced upon by a man armed with a gun the man shot her repeatedly and ran from the seaside while firing shots at persons who chased him the Oba, the Olaba Bay police are saying the area is known for gun for drugs trade and is one of the largest, largest fishing village in Jamaica. The police are saying they have not established a motive for the killing. Well, I got this information yesterday and I heard, I was trying to do my checks. I didn't get much information. And I heard that the getaway driver was caught and one of the gunmen was held but because I could not confirm all of that information I decided not to take care of the story because I don't want to carry anything with any inaccuracies now according to the gleaner it doesn't say any of the culprits were held but you know let's look let, let's look at this a man women are the creators of life on earth and for a man to just look at a woman and pump bullets in her he must be from another planet he could never ever be coming out of the the body of a woman for a man to just look at a woman like that and pump bullets into her and pump bullets into kids. These men are not human beings. And again, 
I will stress the fact that we need to be returning to the gallows to let some of these men, some of these animals, think twice. If you all know the whole Arbor Fishing Village, a very busy place. And maybe that was why they decided to go for her right there because it would create some form of chaos among shoppers, among persons who are plying their trade there. It's just unfortunate that this young lady, well, not really young, but this woman had to lose her life like this. And she's originally from Rasta Corner in Sandy Bay. So you're wondering if this is coming from Clarendon because Clarendon is neighbor to St. Catherine. This woman could have been trailed all the way to the fishing village and her life snuffed out. We hope that somebody somewhere might have known the reason why Patsy Coleman life was taken out and informed the police. We have all confidence in the Jamaican people now because we have developed a level of confidence into the police force now and we're giving information. But even though the confidence is building, we would um let people know be careful which police you give the information to would like for you to find some police that you can confide in not these little ones who go around fleety fleety who are friends here and there because giving the information to the wrong policeman could create problems but let me know what you think in the comment section the final bit of news we want to talk about is what's taking place at the FLA between ex deputy chair and the present chairman. Now, we saw yesterday where the now pres present chairman says that over 200 people of questionable characters were issued with firearm licenses. Now, that is very troubling. And then former deputy chairman Dennis Meadows fired back saying there's a major corruption taking place at the agency where up to last week an acquaintance of his paid $1.35 million to an emissary at the FLA to obtain a firearm license in record time of two months. Well, Dennis Meadows, this is serious information and we hope you can back this up and give the police more information. He also denied that he was involved in any wrongdoing at the FLA. But I think these two men are both members of the ruling party. So I wonder what's going on. Yesterday, Dallin raised grave concern about Meadows' conduct as a FLA director And made us fired back saying his utterances are incendiary and defamatory. I am a straight shooter and speak my mind openly and forthright. I do so without fear or favor. He said, that's Shane Darling. Well, Meadows said when the FLA issues become a matter of public interest, he recused himself from the board to facilitate and unhindering investigation well let me say this we also saw where an incident they said that the two chinese that were killed in saint elizabeth um applied for gun license and were refused now if law-abiding citizens in jamaica cannot get a weapon to protect themselves and persons who have criminal background can get the license we are heading down doom slope. We are heading down doom slope because law abiding people are the ones that are left at the mercenary of criminals. Some of these persons who have questionable characters 
who knows what their firearms are doing when they get it fire lies and firearms in the wrong hand you know can create real problems for the police force and jamaica citizens at large so whatever information mr dennis meadows have i would like for them to share it with the police and this back and forth with him and shane darling should desist and just both of them work together and clean up the fla the fla clearly is a mess it doesn't matter what you want to think of both men based on their utterances it would suggest that the fla is a mess and it needs working on we call on the prime minister to sort out whatever differences that is taking place between these men who if i stand corrected both men are affiliated to the jamaica labor party so the prime minister and then under the ministry which the fla falls i'm not sure if it falls under ministry of national security or ministry of justice but the, the 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 minister that is in charge of the fla needs to step in we need law-abiding citizens who can protect themselves get the privilege of owning a firearm legally we hope that the persons who have questionable characters their firearm license can be revoked and that jamaica will be a more peaceful place but let me know what you think remember you can reach me on whatsapp at 876 892-2079 look out for a neighbor look out for a loved one look out for the children and most of all keep it locked on my opinion tv